Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I have been at uh, on the golf course in Pebble Beach. I did a little live stream earlier today. It was with Dr. Al, who is the official, he's the official dentist of the Digital Asset Investor channel, which means he's my dentist. Um, but anyway, he, he, he's a golfer, and he told me if he ever came out here, he asked me if I wanted to go watch him, and I did. I just wanted to go and follow him around the course. And so I did it for 18 holes, so you can check that off my bucket list. Now let's get into crypto. Uh, it's very rare that I don't do my two videos a day. I'm gonna try my best to get both of my two out. If I don't, I'll have one today, and then one tomorrow, and then I may do one Sunday to make up for it. Um, but let's start with Bitcoin Maxi's gone wild. We've got this Michael Saylor tweet here, which made me laugh out loud. Sometimes I wonder if this guy gets up early in the morning and starts drinking. He says, Satoshi opened a portal into the digital realm, allowing energy to fl flow through and bringing life to cyberspace. Has this guy f flipped his ever freaking lid? <laughs> I do not know where this guy's coming from. Now, I don't know about a massive pump incoming, but what I do know is that this tweet right here is important for you to see because May, probably not often enough, we, we, we don't show you the, the, um, the list of all of the different organizations, uh, companies and banks and financial institutions that Ripple is working with. And people lose sight, they get bogged down in thinking about the SEC lawsuit, and they, but it's always good to take a big, huge step back and look at the big picture. And the big picture is, this thing's going to put a dent in the universe, it's not going away. There's a big difference. Uh, but I think, I think John, who is it said it? I think it was John Deaton. It was some, John Deaton or somebody that said that being sued by the SEC is almost like a rite of passage. All the huge companies have to pay their toll. <laughs> Amazon's been sued. Facebook, I think, has been sued. Just about every major company, Microsoft, you name it. So I'm sure that you know, it's easy to get, it's easy to, for people to get uh, worried about the suit itself, but I've never really worried about the suit itself because this too shall pass. And I didn't say that, that's out of the Bible. Now, while I was on the golf course, I saw this tweet from Ashish Berlin. Now, this is an interesting tweet because I think he's dropping some, some hints in here about some different things. Now, he's leaving Ripple. He says, after nine amazing years, I've decided to wrap up my day job at Ripple. Luckily, I'm not going far as I join the board of directors, where I'll continue to provide input uh, on the company vision strategy. Uh, I haven't decided what's next, but plan to continue building in crypto. In the past few days, I've had the chance to reflect on where we've come from and how much we've accomplished both Ripple as an industry. Now, a lot of these things are interesting historical lessons about this. I mean, when you've, since I've made two to three videos a day for over four years about this one company and this one digital asset, pretty much, I knew most of this stuff, but even I haven't seen some of it, like this part. Uh, when I started, largest crypto exchange was Mt. Gox versus Binance. Daily volume, 2 million versus 70 billion. Market cap, 1.6 billion versus 1.3 trillion. Um, then he says, this is an early picture of our team in the first ever office. Um, and I, I'm trying to see if I recognize anybody. That is uh, Stefan Thomas. And I think this, this is the girl, um, I can't remember her name, but she went on to be at PolySun. Well, actually, you have to whisper that, PolySun. She was there at, at, I don't know if she still is, but she eventually left Ripple and went there. Then you've got this picture. I do remember this picture. He says, 2013, within a few weeks of joining, Stripe tried to acquire us. Ultimately, the deal fell apart. Shortly after this dinner at El Tepa Takira, I'm, I'm, I'm butchering that name, in San Francisco, but who knows what crypto would look like today if Stripe had gotten into the industry in 2013. Well, I'll add to this. 
Um, when Jed McCaleb, there's Jed McCaleb right there. There's Chris Larson. I, I'm drunk. This guy's with Stripe, I know. I think that's that Patrick Collison guy, and I think he might be. With, I don't remember. But anyway, when I, I don't know if this caused the rift, but Jed McCaleb then left to go to Stellar. I think maybe because he was the one that wanted to sell to Stripe. But anyway, he goes and creates Stellar. When he went to create Stellar, that's when Stripe invested a few million dollars in Stripe and they took 2% of the, of the XLM for their purchase. To this day, my understanding is that they own 2% of the XLM. And then Ashish goes on, when he was uh, at Bitcoin Magazine, Vitalik worked out of, out of our office in December 2013. Remember him talking about early smart contract concepts. We made him an offer to be an intern at Ripple but couldn't get the visa sorted out, and he'd later speak at our first annual conference. Now, I don't know if he's dropped, if he's basically trying to say here that, I mean, he could, he could be dripping out there. I mean, we already knew this, but the rest of the world may not have. But I've always felt like Vitalik, it's one of two things I've always felt like, is that Vitalik Buterin either went to Ripple because he was told to go to Ripple to see what he could learn, or he went to Ripple got the idea from smart contracts because they already had Codius at the time or were working on it. And then he left and said, I'll just start my own smart contract platform. Either way, the guy owes a lot to Ripple and the way he acts now is, is not really in sync with someone who should be grateful and not be uh, running his mouth. But anyway, moving on. So then he says in this thread, I'm keeping track of my time. I don't want it to get too, this video to be too long. Then 2013, we piloted Ripple Pay functional credit card where you should, uh, where you could use XRP to make everyday purchases using XRPL DEX to convert any currency in your XRPL wallet in USD. Unfortunately, no card network was willing to come within 10 foot pole of the crypto of crypto at the time. And he says, when RippleNet first launched, liquidity in the market was too limited to support crypto enable payment at, payments at scale. So we laid foundation. Um, he goes on, in 2018, the timing uh, f was finally right for the first production ODL. Now, this is where it gets interesting, is this one. Also in 2018, this person, who I don't know who this is, hosted an uh, amazing crypto dinner in April with Ryan Selkis. That's, that is... Two, he goes by Two Bit Idiot. Now he's blocked me on Twitter because I asked him the relevant questions and he's not willing to answer them. Um, and then, anyway, but he says here that they had a dinner in April of 2018. Now think about this for a minute. I'm just now thinking about this. So what April? So April in in June of 2018 is when Bill Hinman gives the Ethereum Free Pass speech. These Gary Gensler and Ryan Selkis are meet are having dinner with Ripple in April of just a couple of months earlier. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this because the, I'm going to be a dog with a bone with this part of this tweet right here. Look, he's got the Ripple chip in his mouth, which tells you that Ryan Selkis totally got Ripple. Now, this is a guy who's done more bashing of this company and this digital asset than anybody I've seen. We know about all of his ties to Ethereum. Ashish Birla is, I'm telling you, I can see around corners in this space now. Ashish Birla is pointing at, at this, with this tweet right here, he is saying, look here, look right here. And so what, what we're going to do on this channel is we're going to April of 2018 and we're going to find out everything that was going on. And I think that there, were, there are people listening to my voice, probably a 5 to, to 20 internet Twitter sleuths that are going to hear what I'm saying here and they're going to start digging right here. April 2018, Gary Gensler, who is suing Ripple right now, was having dinner with them playing nice back in, in April of 2018. I've, I've always thought that Gary Gensler, even though he wasn't SEC chairman, was involved in what they did behind the scenes in getting Ethereum the free pass. I've always felt that. There's not a doubt in my mind. So, Yes, I am at Pebble Beach right now, but the next week when I get back, I'm going to really dig on this. And so any of you out there that can send me stuff, we need to look further into this. Now, let's look at what Brad Garlinghouse said about Ashish Burley leaving, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts on why he's leaving. 
While I typically like to steal uh, Ashish's thunder, it only seems fitting that he should get uh, to break this news himself. He's had an incredible impact on RIP, our product strategy. I'm grateful he will continue to do so in the new role of our, on our board of directors. With that, I'm excited to congratulate Monica Long, who has been the, a key leader for Ripple for nine years, stepping into his role, I guess. Okay. Then we've got, let's see. Yeah. Then we've got Chris Larson himself. Early at Ripple, I told Ashish to take pictures along the way because it goes by fast. Fun to take a trip down memory in years since you started. Thank you for all your work and contributions to Ripple's success. I couldn't be happier to welcome you to the board. All right. And then we've got this. Now, this is from Mr. Intuitive, who is the official cool guy of the Digital Asset Investor channel. When the cool guy speaks, especially heading into the weekend, because that's when cool guys come out, I listen. And he says, Dear Ashish, I predict in my crystal ball that you will be hired to lead a company that will incorporate Ripple Tech and and or our favorite digital asset, which will facilitate a smooth transition. The XRP army will always protect you. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Now, what if Ashish Birla went to, say, a Bank of America type company? I don't see that, but possible. But I do think that the official cool guy is on to something there. I think, I'll, in fact, I'll go, I'll do it Nov Mike Novogratz style, and I'll bet dimes to donuts that he ends up as at some institution that's incorporating XRP into what they do. Bank of America, but this is from Leonidas, Bank of America hiring employees with Ripple skill for treasury data platform. Bank of America is a long time partner with Ripple, folks. We know that. I'm a digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family that I believe Ashish Birla is headed for some uh, complimentary things. Why else would you go to the Ripple board unless you might have some kind of plan to pop up at a company that will be using XRP and ODL? Thanks for